Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming today. I bring you greetings from President Federico Binatti of the local province and from the whole provincial government. Let me also say thank you to the Pro Loco of Novara and to all of those who, in these past few months, have worked to reach this goal, which is surely very important from both a cultural and a touristic level. The city of Novara, along with its province, will be able to pay homage to a great director of the 20th century, Mr. Giorgio Streller, whose 100th anniversary of birth falls in 2021 and who studied his career in the theater field in the city of Novara. For us, it's very important to remember his activity in our city in what also needs to be a European memorial of the greatest directors of the 20th century. I wanted to say thank you for being here today to our commissioner and to our mayor, Mr. Canelli. What we did was simply listening to our proloco that put forward this beautiful proposal to us. When ideas are worth and they work well, it's possible to implement them. Despite the many difficulties, we were able to give a financial contribution to allow the setting of the memorial stone and of the plaque. In the next few days, we'll hold the inauguration ceremony of those. But the biggest result is a set in Novara and its province in a European context. For those who love theater in general and Mr. Giorgio Streller in particular. Thank you to the province who is hosting us today. Thank you to the Proloco and to Ms. Clarissa Mambrini, because Ms. Clarissa Mambrini is the person who designed this project that will go on all over this year. Of course, if the pandemic allows, also face to face, maybe starting from mid year onwards, or at least we hope. There will be a series of events that will be held in some cultural venues in the city of Novara. Surely this is an excellent opportunity to reinforce a very strong tradition of our city from a cultural viewpoint, specifically of theater. We have a very old tradition in theater here. It's also a good opportunity to remember Mr. Giorgio Streller right there in that place where as already recalled by Ivan, he studied at 21 or 22 years old, I think, directing his very first play in Novara. He began from here. After that, he, beca he became one of the greatest theater directors in the world. He had an extraordinary career and he shined a light on the whole Italian culture. It looked fair to us as municipality of Novara to support this initiative, first of all, because it's been well designed, and second, because it shines light not only on Mr. Streller, which is definitely the most relevant part of this project, but it also shines light on a place which has been neglected for so many, many years, and which played an important role in the development of culture in our city the former Cinema Excelsior. As you all know, it's a property of, a, of the Piedmont region. Of, obviously, it lies in some spaces taken up by the police headquarters. We already conducted some service before the pandemic. We conducted some service along with the commissioner and the regional officials to understand what is needed to put the theater back in service. I must say I found some newspaper articles or maybe I saw the news on some local newspaper. Maybe it was on your newspaper, Eleonora, the Corriere di Novara, already in 1995 or 2000, between 1995 and 2000. Everything was ready. Everything had been done by the Piedmont region for the redevelopment of the cinema of the Cinema Excelsior. Unfortunately, as it often happens in the twisted bureaucratic ways of administrations, the project was a little or better totally lost. 
it's our intention, I'm not going to say that we'll do it. I'll only say that when we're sure about it. Now, I'll just say that we studied again to keep an eye on it, to try to understand how to give that place back to the city. It would be awesome if that venue was given back to the city, and obviously that in that venue, theater kind of activities would happen with qualified professionals that work especially with young people. Moreover, that venue is a place from a strategic viewpoint that I find very interesting because it could also be used in synergy with the children's playgrounds. If they organize activities for kids, the theater would be the headquarter and then they could move to the near playground to do their activities like theater plays. This way, our children's playground would be revitalized also from a cultural standpoint. This is the general idea we have in mind. What have we done up to now? We conducted a survey. We conducted a survey, then we should meet up again with the Piedmont region officials in March this year to begin the procedure to take charge of the venue. I'll point out that getting in there it makes you want to tear your hair out because there are lots of investments that will need to be made in order to make the theater usable or functional to any kind of relevant activities. But the first step, of course, is find an agreement with the Piedmont region as we did for other buildings that we have in the municipality of Novara that are provided in use to the municipality itself, the Colonia de la Gogna, for instance belongs to the Piedmont region, but for many years it's been provided for use to the municipality of Novara. Following the same scheme, we would like to take the lead back on that place and obviously to restore it and make it usable to the project I told you about before. So, this is a good opportunity to talk about this issue too and to tell you that it's not that we don't care for that place. We do care for it. But unfortunately, this unlucky year hampered us a little. As soon as possible, we'll take back control of this matter. Actually, I can already tell you that last week I had an interview with the regional officials that are responsible for our heritage and we discussed about this theater. Therefore, thanks. Thanks to all those who worked on this project that enables us not only to remember Mr. Streller, but also to shine lights on that venue of culture that all together we must try to give back to the city. Thanks. I'm very proud and happy to be here today because this is not the end, but the beginning of a project that was born about nine months ago. Nine months ago, so nearly the pregnancy of a baby. The role of the Proloco, one of the roles of the Proloco that I always like to highlight, is the role of local connector. And that's the reason why, once we got the request from Clarissa, we embraced it immediately. The request, based on the book written by her some time ago, the idea that was born when the book had been presented, was to put up a plaque in memory of the great director and to propose again the documentary exhibit that had been done before. We made this project ours. We reviewed and enhanced it. Those who know me know that I hang a little around Europe and the idea of the activation of a European cultural passageway about Mr. Streller came right away. The underlying idea is inaugurate this plaque in memory of the young Streller who started his career as a director here in Novara. Sen uh, Sunday, uh, January 24th at 11 in the morning, 
I'm telling you the news, but please don't publish it. Sunday 24th at 11 a.m., but I'm asking you not to make it public to avoid gatherings in times of COVID just because of this. I'm very sorry not to tell it to the citizens, but it's just a form of attention that we have to allow the authorities to do their job properly. In her book, Clarissa tells about this event that she discovered during a documentary kind of research of other importance. And it's evident in the book she wrote that I entirely read last August, especially in the beautiful part where she tells about the cultural excitement of the city in 1943 and the years around. Novara was an extremely vibrant city and it was not just a coincidence that Mr. Streller started right here with his dream and his work. Mr. Streller, to me, and I'll give you my personal view on him, is an example of innovation in dark times. So from this innovative drive, we, as Proloco, instead of stopping, actually, I wanted to close my speech with this, but I'll say it now instead. In the time in which people close their eyes not to see, and in which people stop, they tend to stop. The revolutionary act is looking up and keep on planning. I made this quote my own. I changed it, modified it a little, so it's not exactly mine, but I made it mine. In such a hard time like this is, it's surely important to continue for the benefit of the city and to create new opportunities for tourism and culture once the pandemic will be over. These things take lots of time, so projects must be designed now, so as to be ready when the borders will open up again. We also wish, through a whole complex digital work, I ask you to be patient over the thanks that I'll give, because you'll truly understand how much lies underneath it to create the conditions and the container to debate on the future of theater in these circumstances. Because you see, theater, like tourism, is among those things that can be 100% digitized. You can watch a lovely documentary on Central Africa, on South America, on Australia, but one thing is watching the documentary, one thing is to tour around. Theater is the same. You can watch a very good theater show on TV, but seeing the actor and then clapping your hands until they got skin to applaud their zeal is a different thing. So we wish that theater can continue to perform on site, but also wish to create a container in this period where people question about the role of culture and theater from now on. What we wish for is that it can, through the digital format, go beyond the borders between countries and, in Italian language, with lots of proud, export the Italian character of the culture. And I say this, being an Italian who lived abroad for many years, and it's one of the things that unites us as expatriates. It'll be wonderful to see at the end of the whole digital journey what comes up because we don't know it now. So now I'll thank all the agents with whom we interacted and who supported the project. The artistic side of the project will be explained in detail by Clarissa. After that, I'll give the floor to Professor Rosso for the part about Europe that we especially care for. I think, first of all, the commissioner. The commissioner because the project was born in her office from her way to embrace this cultural project. That's when the spark ignited because if I had found a colder commissioner, given that the theater is inside its casalitoria and there's a master of the house, I probably wouldn't have had so much enthusiasm in carrying the project out. 
and it was a sense of responsibility too. After that, the province, represented by Mr. President Binatti and the delegate Mr. De Grandis, who listened to us and embraced the project. The municipality with the mayor and I must say also the council members, so Mr. Jodice before and Mr. Paganini after, both responsible for the public works that thoroughly followed the project from the beginning to the end. And all of the offices of the municipality involved, which were quite a lot. The UNPLI, National Union of the Proloco of Italy, which sponsored us. The Accademia Europea del Grande Est, which sponsored us too. Teatro Totale of Milan with Salvo, who's there and who's taking care of all the digital part, which is huge. It has become huge in this pandemic. The Teatro Coccia with its artistic director, Ms. Corinne Baroni, who also welcomed the project very warmly. At the beginning, we planned to do the documentary exhibit on two theaters of the city, on the four years of two theaters, Coccia and Farazzana, and on the Rossini, Rossini Museum too. We'll do this, but unfortunately, we'll have to put it off. Anyway, we thank the Te Teatro Farazzana with Ms. Lucilla Giannoni and the Museo Aldorsini with Mr. Antonio Poggi Stefanina, Novara Cinema and Cinema VIP with Mr. Mario Tosi. Later, Clarissa will tell you the reason why. Cabiria Teatro with Elena and Massimo. Mr. Andrea Volpintesta, who is a star, an international lead dancer, that we involved in a very innovative piece of art to translate Streller in form of ballet. And that's the very first time it's been done ever. Clarissa will better, it will better illustrate this after. Here's what he wrote on Facebook yesterday. And I want to give this to you as the utterance of a great man. It is for me a pleasure and a privilege to be a part of this artistic project. That's a big incitement for me as a dancer and a performer. News about it are coming soon. Thanks everyone. Andrea Volpintesta. He's sublime. So the fact that he's thanking us for the project is truly a big honor. Ms. Antonella Albano, lead dancer of Teatro La Scala and international choreographer, she's the one who designed this piece of art. She also danced with Mr. Bolle in a TV show on New Year's Eve. The Conservatorio Giuseppe Verdi of Milan, which is also involved. The Centro Studi Teatro Carcano of Milan, Jazz Art Ballet Company. In the future, we also would like to involve the municipality of, municipalities of the province of Novara, especially those of Oleggio and Borgomanero, because they've got some theaters with a strong tradition, a very old tradition, but also some touristic towns, such as Orta and Arona, because this will have to be a touristic project too, midway between cultural and touristic. Thanks, and thanks everyone for coming here, despite the difficulties of this period. I joined Caterina in the thanks she gave before because the initial idea was to dedicate a plaque to Mr. Giorgio Streller and it looked like that would be the end of the story. But after involving Caterina and the Proloco, it greatly evolved, engaging many institutions, many cultural agencies, both in Novara and in Milan. And it's a project in constant evolution given the times we were in, because we had made a plan for this period that all of a sudden we had to redesign almost totally in the past few weeks. I'm referring precisely to what should have happened this week. As Caterina mentioned, beside the inauguration of the plaque in memory of Mr. Giorgio Streller, before what it was the theater of Casalittoria, so where he debuted as director in 1943, 
The initial idea included also a new setting up of the photo exhibit, the young Streller from Novara to the Piccolo Teatro of Milan, that I had launched three years ago in the 20th anniversary of his passing. It should have been set up among the Teatro Coccia, Teatro Faraggiana, and the Museo Storico Aldo Rossini. Of course, as everyone knows, theaters, movie theaters, and museums are closed, and so they'll be for some time still, unfortunately. As a consequence, we'll postpone the setting up on the three venues until better times come. However, it'll still be in one of the next months in the year 2021, because we really wanted to hold these events on Mr. Streller right in this year, since on August 14th, 1921, he was born in Trieste. So this year is the 100th anniversary of his birth. Moreover, why did we care so much to organize something this week? And especially on Sunday, January 24th, that will be the date when the celebration event for Mr. Giorgio Streller will be broadcasting online? That's because his debut as a director here in Novara took place on January 14th, 1943, and also then it was a Sunday. Therefore, in the wake of the proposal, born three years ago, right after the exhibit, to dedicate a plaque to Mr. Streller, we have delayed the thing a bit, and we have arrived until 2021, precisely because we really cared about getting the chance of this anniversary that falls exactly on the same days as, as in 1943. We would have liked to involve the citizenry, but it won't be so. Anyway, the online event will be broadcasted on the channel of Teatro Totale on Sunday nights at 9. It will encompass a recording of the inauguration ceremony of the plaque and the event that originally should have taken place at the Cinema VIP. I'll tell you in a while why at the Cinema VIP, but for the reasons you all know, we were forced to transfer the event on a digital platform and also to change a little the initial layouts. So, these days, we'll record at the Cinema VIP with Cabiria Teatro, so with Ms. Elena Ferrari and Mr. Mariano Arenella, who accepted right away with lots of enthusiasm, as all the other professionals who eagerly and very generously put at the disposal of this project their art and their work. They will read some passages from some writings of Mr. Streller, rather than from a book or the documents of the exhibit. I'll take turns with them to tell you the story of the young Streller. In addition, there will be a part which we dare call a real jam, with the solo contemporary dance performance of Mr. Andrea Volpintesta, former lead dancer at the Scala and current artistic co-director, along with Ms. Sabrina Brazzo of Jazz Art Ballet in Milan. He'll perform Mr. Giorgio Streller, and that's the first time ever that Mr. Giorgio Streller is turned into dance. This solo performance was designed for him by Ms. Antonella Albano, lead dancer of the Scala, who, as Caterina said, performed just a little time ago with Mr. Roberto Bolle on Rayuno TV channel on the show called Danza con me. This dance piece tells about the power of suggestion. Since the point is conveying the spirit of the story I'll told about in my book and in the exhibit, and that will go through again in this online events, Andrea will tell through dancing this journey of growth and development of the young Streller, who, among books, theater plays, and after starting working as an actor, all of a sudden has a kind of epiphany that goes beyond his first play direction in Novara and other play directions he was able to carry out before the foundation of Piccolo Teatro. The final epiphany, one of the last images I depicted in my book, is precisely from February 1943, when he visited what would become the headquarter of Piccolo Teatro of Milan. There, he understood it would become the house that Paolo Grassi and himself 
had been looking for a long time. Centro Studi Coreografici Teatro Carcano hosted us for the filming. You'll see Andrea dancing on Mozart's music, which wasn't chosen by chance. First of all, because Mozart was the favorite composer of Mr. George Streller, and in particular, the music piece you'll be listening to, which is very famous, is the second movement of the serenade Eine kleine Nachtmusik. The night of May 14th, 1947, when Piccolo Teatro of Milan was inaugurated, that serenade was played by the Scala Orchestra, exactly to mark the bond that was being established between a historical Milanese theater institution like La Scala and the new institution that was then Piccolo Teatro of Milan. This is the program of what you'll see online on Sunday nights. Why did we choose the VIP, which is a movie theater? Because when we talked to Mr. Mario Tosi to involve him in this project, we discovered that the VIP is actually the heir of Cinema Excelsior. When the Excelsior closed in 1984, the Viale family, that had always managed it, handed over the license to the cooperative called Altamira, managed at the time by Mr. Mario Tosi precisely. So, what was just a public hall became the Cinema VIP in 1985 thanks to this handover. For this reason, it also looked to us a positive message, a kind of ideal continuation of what was the Cinema Excelsior. Coming back to Cabiria Teatro, the will to involve Ms. Elena Ferrari and Mr. Mariano Renella is not only because we already collaborated in the past and because for years and years I've been wanting to do something about the story of the young Streller. This collab was also born because Ms. Elena Ferrari graduated at the school of Piccolo Teatro and she was lucky enough to pass the test to join the school when Mr. Streller was still there. So, she could also work with him in those which were basically the last few months of his life. She told me that at the funeral she was among the students who attended in the burial chamber. So there is a kind of handover also for her and it's important to link this to our project. Coming back in time a little, given that some journalists already asked me about that, the book which is this, The Young Streller, From Novara to Piccolo Teatro of Milan, was published by Lampi di Stampa in 2013. In 2017, in the occasion of the 20th anniversary from the passing of Mr. Giorgio Streller, we set up this documentary exhibit with copies of images and documents included in the book, but not only. We launched it here in Novara, after we succeeded in bringing it to the Teatro Carcano of Milan and to Circolo Valdostano della Stampa in Aosta. We especially cared to bring it back to Novara this year, also because at the time there were some complaints, because they told us it had been held for a too little time. Therefore, we wanted to satisfy the requests of the fans who wanted to visit it. The book and the exhibit have been quite a long journey. It's almost eight years now since I've been promoting this story around. I'm very satisfied because they both were acclaimed even by actors and artists who dealt with Mr. Giorgio Streller. And I'm even happier that this project ignited right away the enthusiastic reaction of Caterina and Proloco Novara. I'm telling you, Caterina is a powerhouse. It's awesome to rely on the support of such a person. She's very professional and above all, she's very determined. If you arrange with her to carry out a project, the project will be done and that's it. I apologize to the institutions that I may be solicited a little bit more of what it should be, but otherwise we wouldn't have succeeded. Let's also say that this period hasn't been easy for anybody. We had to redesign this week's events, but actually also for the institutions, given the pandemic. Managing all the procedures and the bureaucracy implied by the plaque and everything else, it has not been easy, obviously. And I'm happy as well 
that had an enthusiastic reaction from all the partners who decided to join in the project from Teatro Totale to Cabiria Teatro, Andrea Volpintesta, Antonella Albano, the Conservatorio Verdi of Milan. There, we maybe didn't mention it, I guess I didn't mention that before, it's involved because the music piece of Mozart will be played by Mr. Eduardo Braga, who's one of the best disciples of this Milanese institution. And the union of Novara and Milan, which is in the book, in the story of the young Streller, is also kept because, as you can see, we involved in this project agents from both Novara and Milan. Then, of course, we wish that as soon as possible we'll manage to do everything face to face. Luckily for us, we have Teatro Totale with Salvo Manganaro. He's helping us a lot in all that's digital. But obviously, since we're talking about theater, the best thing will be having our audience back there on site. We only wish, as Caterina said, or at least we hope so, to continue in the next month with some themed events and in-depth events that, starting from the young Streller, or from what Mr. Streller was all along his career, can ignite a spark for some considerations on what could be the role of theater and of culture in such a critical moment. Allora, casualmente, l'Accademia Europea del Grand Test ha un ramoscello che si trova a Novara. E, ve ne dico prima, accidentally, L'Académie Européenne du Grand Est has a small branch in Novara. In the first place, I'd like to tell you something about it. The Académie produces thinking and research. Européenne is the main focus of its work. Grand Est, after the great reform of regions in France, it encompasses the regions of Alsace with Strasbourg, Lorraine with Metz, and Champagne, which is not only a drink, but also a region, with Reims. That's quite a remarkable merger. Why were we involved? Apart from the fact that we have friends and connections here in Novara. Because Mr. Streller is a figure of European scale. In the first place, because of his family, where you could find some Austrian, Italian, even Croatian, I believe, roots, and languages such as French and German, beside Italian. After that, Streller's interest in Novara was linked to his internment in Switzerland, in Muren, more precisely, where there was an internment camp managed by the Swiss for the Italians who found refuge there as militaries. There, he got the chance to meet, among others, Mr. Rosi, a relevant name in the world of movies. From there, he moved to Geneva, where he organized, in French, some theater plays. The French language was not a stranger to him because he sucked it, I might say, from his grandmother. After his main period of growth in Italy, he got noticed and chosen by Mr. Mitterrand, along with the Minister of Culture, Mr. Long. It was a pair that worked very well in France at the time because they had some ideas that tended to overcome the previous closure of Mr. de Gaulle towards certain pro-European movements. And there, the idea of a theater was born. Le Théâtre Odéon pour l'Europe. Basically, that was this contention that as architecture, painting, music, which have a footprint that leaves traces beyond any borders. Also theater, especially if guided by a hand that's able to drive ideas well. 
can have its own dimension of fusion. They chose Mr. Streller, and the theater lasted five years under his lead. Obviously, at some point, the ways parted. Mr. Streller also had his own growth uh, in the political sector, and he ended up, for instance, in the European Parliament. Finally, we, as partners, what do we intend to do? To lend a hand, to help put together the figure of Streller outside Europe, but without overshadowing the fundamental role of the two people, maybe even three, who are here on my right. So it's mostly a work of matching in what can be done, but it will be done with the utmost pleasure. Thanks. We gave Proloco the contribution. Can you hear me? Yes. We gave our contribution, but also our commitment to proceed with the program in several ways. Among these, also taking the project to the historical traditional theaters in the province of Novara. We have, for example, Oleggio and Borgomanero, and taking it inside the schools as well. I imagine, given this complex period, that it can't be done now, but maybe from September, with the start of the school year, it will be possible to walk that path. So, it's a project that won't finish nor die today, but it will go on. Thanks. Well, it's weird that I'm in this project, despite the credits I've been given, and that I accept, because credits are always welcome. But I deem them a little excessive, because all I did was just green-lighting a wonderful project, which was presented to me. Moreover, theater is one of my greatest passions, along with movies, so I felt even more compelled to take action. It was something clever, something due, a necessary tribute to the city, and really, the opportunity was absolutely perfect, I'd say. How do I get, so as to say, how do I get in the game? Just because today, as you know very well, the whole building is taken up by the police headquarters in the part that coincides with the former Cinema Excelsior. Then there are also the offices of the region, and on the opposite side of the rectangle, there's also the IRS. Let's say that I was maybe the only member who, and that's the only credit I will take for myself, maybe, but it's really a minimal credit, I dare say, compared with the project on its whole. It is that I recognized and I pushed for the reactivation of this theater, which would be a total shame to leave as it is. Actually, we already dealt with the theater in the past, because with the region, we parceled out a very tiny portion of it that will be assigned to the police headquarters to enlarge their offices that are really very complex in this moment. Let's say that in this operation too, and uh, I repeat, it's about a very slight part, we always held in high regard the fact that this theater had to be given back, hopefully soon, very soon, and entirely, to the citizenry. So, the acquisition of this very small portion shouldn't have, in any way, and in fact it didn't, compromise the future use of the theater. I embraced this cause because I found it amazing, smart, large-scale, European even, mostly European, as I understood from Ms. Katerina Zadra. And I agree with your definition about her, and not only her, because she was the one who proposed most assertively 
but also the passion I saw in the work done by Clarissa, and in the words when they came to illustrate the project to me. Really, it would have been a huge mistake and a stupid mistake from my side not to embrace this cause right away. Therefore, we arranged with the mayor. Given that actually the proximity of this space with the police headquarter is uninterrupted, everyone can see. We only agreed that in the future, when this theater will be back, and I probably won't be there anymore. I don't know, but I'll come for the special occasion for sure. I'll come for the special occasion. There should be an activity compatible with all that's the activity of the police headquarter. But we already designed a whole series of hypotheses and projects that do not interfere at all with our tasks, and that instead will allow the city to have another space, and what's more, a beautiful space, because it's true that it is now very much in decay. But when a structure is of that standing, there's that balcony, that view, which is truly breathtaking. Let's say it's a beautiful woman who, at present, is a little shabby, but then right after it gets back in shape, I'm convinced that it'll shine lights. It'll shine well-deserved lights on the city. In conclusion, it's not them who thank me, but it's me who thank them, because I'm convinced that the police station somehow, in some ways, will benefit from this new life of the theater. Therefore, thanks, thanks everyone.